Hey everyone, I'm Jason Peacock. Welcome back to another review. Today we're looking at Flick of Faith from Awaken Realms Light. Now, Awaken Realms is one of my favorite companies. Nemesis, Lords of Hellas. I love those games. Um, I've got Tainted Grail coming, and it looks fantastic, and it's been getting good reviews. And The Edge Dawnfall. Uh, not to mention, I just backed The Great Wall. So anything these guys put out on Kickstarter, it at least has my attention. I am going to have a good hard look at this. So they decided recently to come up with a light division. They've got Flick of Faith here and another game called Bees. Let me give you a rundown of how this baby plays and then we'll come back here and I'll tell you what I think. Flick of Faith only takes a minute to set up. You roll out the mat, you give each player four temples and five profits. These are your flicking discs. Uh, on a three player game, Players will start with six instead of five. Every player is gonna have a corner. In this case, this green corner is mine and I can shoot from anywhere of my corner cloud. Also, each player will get dealt out a random god with a power and all these are double-sided tiles. Everybody gets their own asymmetric special power. A game round starts off with the law phase. There's this deck of cards, and we're gonna reveal two of them. This is gonna be a thumbs up vote. So until the end of the game, each player replaces two of their small discs with a bigger version. Or if everyone votes, if the majority votes thumbs down, uh, until the end of the game, if a prophet touches a border of an island, city, naval, it is outside of that island. Usually, just touching a border counts, but if this law was enacted, it would not count. You would have to be fully in. So everybody's going to hold their thumb out sideways. Three, two, one, and vote thumbs up or thumbs down. If it's a tie, then you shuffle these cards up, and whatever one gets drawn will become the law for that round. Some of them will just last for that round, and some of them will last until the end of the game. And there is a good amount of variety. After the law phase, you've got the mission phase, and that's the part where you're flicking your discs. In turn order, players will flick their discs and try and get them on an island. They want to have what's called presence. The other thing you can do is hit this navel in the middle. If you hit that, you're going to get one point for every island you have presence on. So if you have a few guys on an island and you get that navel shot... I would remove this guy, and then I'd get one, two, three points in this example. The other thing you can do when you hit an island is if you hit those circles there, let's pretend I got there. Then you get to put one of these temples on here. You can put it anywhere on the island, including inside the circle, and then you take your profit off. The advantage of that is, first of all, they're harder to shoot off with a regular disc. As long as they're on the island, they count as having presence. And on future turns, they're going to remain in play. So you still have all your flicking discs plus your temples. These things get knocked into the water, and they're gone. And it takes a lot to knock these things away. Let's try that again. So you can do it, but I also bounced my own disc out of there. Everybody's going to go until all your discs are flicked. And then you're going to count score at the end of that round. There's going to be four rounds in the game. You're going to get one point for every island you have presence on. And you're going to get an extra two points for any island that you dominate. So if you have more pieces than another player, you dominate it. So I would score one, two, three, four, five points in this case. And then I would just grab my little point token. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. So that was Flick of Faith. This game sets up in seconds, so it's very accessible. Whoop, here's some chips, here's some chips. You, you can play this game with anyone. You, anybody can flick a, a disc, and most people are pretty happy to give it a try. It plays good at all player counts, two, three, and four. I'll play at any player count. And if you get a player that's really good, it can get very competitive two-player in a good way. 
The law cards at the start of every game round really help define this game and make it what it is. Those, uh, those rules that affect the different levels. You can have every, anything from having to flick two discs with both hands, to having to close your eyes to flick discs, to getting an extra profit. There's enough variety in there to keep the game fresh for many, 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 many plays. And just as a game that you are unskillfully flicking discs on, it is very fun. When you actually start to get some skill at this game, like at pool or curling or something, it goes to a whole other level, which is great. And it plays in 30 to 40 minutes. You could probably get it down to 20 minutes with a two-player game as well. Um, so I, that just adds to the accessibility of this game. And if you like, you know, if you are into games like curling, it's, uh, it's really fun that you've got these plays you can make where you can flick a disc to flick your own, to flick another one, or, you know, uh, flick another one off an island. I absolutely love that aspect of this game. I typically like most flicking games I've played. I've got, um, uh, flick em up. And Flick 'em Up Dead of Winter, Flip Ships, and, well, Flick 'em Up is great, but it takes a lifetime to set that game up. It's a table hog, and, be, and that means it's not accessible. Game night comes around, I would love to get that game out, but, I mean, i got to spend an hour before everyone shows up and make sure that game's all set up. Um, great game, though, but this one, I just love how it's bloom, flip out the mat, hand everyone some discs, and go at her. So it's a great, fun game. I'm glad I have it in my collection. I've played it a ton already. I've brought it out to uh, friends' houses. I played it with my son and his friend a bunch. Um, just my son. So I've played all the different player accounts, many games, and I'm still just as unskilled now as I was the first game, but that doesn't stop me from having fun. Now, um, it's not a perfect game. Um, you can get to the point where victory just it's unachievable. Somebody can be doing so well for those first three rounds and you literally don't have a chance. Even if you had the greatest round ever and they had the worst round ever, there's a chance you cannot come back and win a game. But I don't necessarily mind in a game of this weight, this quickly, and you know, it's the same with the, the powers of the gods. They are not all balanced. Some of them, in my opinion, for the way I play, have a pretty useless skill or one that I often go the whole game without using. Do I care that they're not balanced? No, this is a beer and pretzels uh, flicking game. You know, just flip over to the other side because they're all double-sided. You can have your pick of the one you want. And my biggest complaint about this game, they've got four corners of the board. They've got red, yellow, blue, and green. And then they've got green, um, Blue, purple, and yellow. There's no red discs. The blue and the purple look, they're really hard to tell, tell apart. Like, really hard. I'm, like, holding them under the light to tell them apart. They have stickers on them, which, which when you get them on, they really help with that differentiating. But why don't you just have red that match the red corner of the board? I don't know. It's, it's a terrible, dumb, dumb decision. I don't know why they did that. But other than that... Solid game, good fun. If you're into dexterity games and you want a really quick to set up accessible one, this is your guy, Flick of Faith. I'm Jason Peacock, and I'll see you next time.